All right, so we've been learning about limits and derivatives, and today we're going to talk a little bit more about some derivatives. We'll warm up with some little tricky derivatives, derivatives, and we'll talk about tangent lines as well. So let's get into it. So first we're going to warm up with some kind of trickier derivatives using the definition of derivative like we've been using already. And just to review what a derivative is, so if we have some kind of a function, so, so we have a function that looks something like this. this is kind of my like go-to function, and we think this is right here x, and then we go a little bit further down, we call this x plus h. So h is something that we're kind of creating, it's a little bit, it's just a small value, so it just gets us a little bit further than x. And then if we thought about the points those map to, up here, so this would be right here, that would be on the y-axis f of x, so this is f of x, the function here, and this guy right here would be f of x plus h. And what we want is we want to know the slope of the tangent line. Let's use a different color of that. So we want to know the slope of the tangent line to the function right at x. So if that was a straight line, if I could draw a little bit straighter with this pen, um, that we want to know what is the slope of that line. And the way we find that is by using the slopes of lines that are uh, approaching it. So if we start with the slope through these two points, so through uh, X through f of x and f of x plus h, and then we bring this point back closer and closer. So we're making this point approach the other one, so we're basically create, making h get smaller and smaller. So we're going to have tangent lines that are getting closer and closer, and eventually are approaching the slope of that red tangent line. That's kind of our goal. So altogether, what that is, is we're basically taking a limit as we make h as small as possible. So the slope of the first black line I drew here between the two points, uh, x comma f of x, and x plus h comma f of x plus h, is, so we just do change in y over change in x, so that is f of x plus h minus f of x, that's the change in the y values, and then we divide by the difference in x and x plus h, that's just h. Right, the distance between x and x plus h, if you subtract them, the x's go away, it's just h. And what we want is we want that h to get as small as possible, so we want the limit here as h goes to 0. And this is the derivative of a function at x. So f prime of x, we say, is equal to the limit as h approaches 0, f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. And we're going to try it with these derivatives right here. So some of them you note that we're going to do just at an x value in general. So we have just f prime of x, we're finding a general equation. If we can do that, like if we get f prime of x, I'm just going to make up an example here. So let's say we've done this limit, and we get f prime of x equals like 3x plus 1. Something like that. So if we get 3x plus 1, that means I can find the slope of f of x at any point. So like f prime of 2 would be 6 plus 1, that's 7. f prime of 8, that would be 24 plus 1, is 25. Okay, so I could find the derivative at any value if I can get an equation. If you're just finding it at a specific value, so the, the initial, uh, so this is the kind of the general f of, prime of x formula. The initial way that we learned this was actually with an a value. We learned f prime of a, and it was the same limit as h approaches 0, f of a plus h minus f of a divided by h. And this will find you the derivative at that specific point a, but then I don't have like an equation like this where I can plug in different values. I'll only have the slope at a single point, and that's not as useful because it's not as, I can't make it generalized. I can't find it for other values of x. So uh, we could do that like for f prime of 2, and we'll try it just to show that that's how it works. But again, I'll mention that it's more powerful to get a formula like this because then you can plug in any value of x you want. So let's try these derivatives. So the first one we've got is f of x is x cubed, and we're trying to find a general formula for f prime of x. So what I'm going to do is list out just my formula. So f prime of x is equal to the limit as h approaches 0. Very, very important that you know this formula. f of x plus h, excuse me, f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. So we're just going to plug the pieces in. So uh, we've been struggling with this a little bit, uh, and it's just a function notation thing. So if f of x is x cubed, well, what's f of 3? It's 3 cubed. f of a negative 1 is negative 1 cubed. A little bit off on the edge of this here. Sorry about that. Um, f of star is star cubed. f of x plus 1 would be x plus 1 quantity cubed. So f of x plus h, hey, that's x plus h cubed. 
you just plug it in for the x. Now, I've had other people trying to plug x cubed in where the x is here. That'd be going backwards. We're taking x plus h, and we're putting it into this function. So it's x plus h cubed. And then I subtract f of x, which is just x cubed, all over h, and that is the limit as h approaches 0. There we go. So now we have to expand out x plus h cubed. That's a little bit tricky. Uh, x plus h cubed means x plus h times x plus h times x plus h one more time. If we use binomial theorem, that you might have learned in the last year or two, um, we can use the third row of Pascal's triangle to do that. So I'm just going to write out the expansion of x plus h cubed. If you don't know it, that's OK. You could uh, FOIL twice, or um, you could just expand it out any way that you want. So this is limit as h approaches 0. The expansion of x plus h cubed is x cubed plus 3x squared h. So the x exponent comes down. Next one is 3xh squared. Then the next one is going to be just 1h cubed. So 1, 3, 3, 1 is the thing that comes from Pascal's triangle. If you don't remember that, not a big deal. Still subtracting x cubed. And then on the bottom, we have h. Well, it looks like our x cubes cancel out. Let me use a different color to show that that happens. So the x cubes go away. And now it looks like all of my terms on top share an h. So let's pull that h out to the front. So this is the limit as h approaches 0 of h times 3x squared plus 3xh, because I pulled 1h out to the front, and then plus h squared. That's all still divided by h. And hey, look, that h cancels now. And so the point of doing all this is because Remember our limit strategies. Our limit strategies, our first one was try just plugging it in. Well, at this point, in the general formula, if you plug in 0 for h, so that h just went away, you would have f of x minus f of x. That's 0 over h, which is also 0. So you have 0 over 0. That's the problem. We can't do that. Even at this point right here, if I plug in 0, I would have x cubed minus x cubed, which is 0 over 0. Even here, I would have. Um, if I put 0 in for all the h's, I would have 0 on the top because the x cubes would cancel, and I'd have 0 on the bottom. But now that I've crossed out those h's, if I plug this 0 in everywhere I see an h, let's see what happens. I would just have 3x squared. Hey, that's not so bad. So all you have to do is get to this point where you can cancel out those h's, and then you just plug in h everywhere you see the 0. Or, sorry, 0 everywhere you see the h. So 3x squared is my f prime of x. Now again, let's talk about what that means. x cubed looks like this. That's our x cubed function. This formula gives me the slope of the tangent line at any point x. So if I want to know the slope of the tangent line at 5, it would be 3 times 25, which is 75. That makes sense, because we'd be way up here somewhere, very, very steep line. At like negative 2, negative 2 squared is 4 times 3 is 12. We'd have a slope of 12 at negative 2. Where do we want it? I want to know what it is at 3. So at 3, it looks like it's going to be 3 times 3 squared, which is 27. Pretty steep line, even already at 3. One of the interesting things when you get derivative equations, this is something we talk a lot about in calculus, is what does this mean for the function? Well, 3x squared is always positive. So anywhere you are on this function, you are always going to have a positive slope, which kind of makes sense, because if you draw in tangent lines here, anywhere you draw it, it's going to have a positive slope. right? Every tangent line to x cubed will have a positive slope. Cool. So let's try another function. This time we have 1 over x. So 1 over x is not a polynomial. This is a rational function. 1 over x looks like this, you might remember. So it looks like the slopes to this guy actually will always be negative, because we'll always have a downward sloping tangent line anywhere you put it on this function. So let's see if that is true. This time we're only going to find f prime of 2. So we're going to use the other formula here. f prime of a is equal to f of a plus h minus f of a over h. So you say, wait, I thought you said that the x is more powerful. It is, and I would use the x, but I want to just show you, if you want to find a specific value, this formula will work. So f prime of 2 is going to be f of 2 plus h minus f of 2 divided by h. 2 plus h, we plug into the function. So that, sorry, this is the limit as h approaches 0. I forgot my limit entirely. Limit as h approaches 0. So this is limit as h approaches 0. f of 2 plus h, I take 2 plus h. And again, I'm noticing we're having a lot of trouble with this, so I'm going to put this in red. I'm putting that right where the x is. That's all I'm doing. Okay, so I'll use some uh, color switching here, strategies. So we'll do 1 over, put that 2 plus h in red, because I'm just plugging it into the function. 
and then I'm subtracting off 1 over 2, because I'm putting 2 into the function, and then dividing by h. So now, different than the expansion one we had last in the last slide, because we are not expanding 2 plus h. It's not like 2 plus h squared or cubed or anything like that. We have two fractions here that we have to mash together. Well, to subtract two fractions, you need a common denominator. So let's do that. So over here, I need a 2 plus h on the top and the bottom. And over here, it looks like I need a 2 on the top and the bottom. So now, what we have is the limit as h approaches 0. It looks like we have 2. We have to distribute the negative to both of these. So minus 2 minus h divided by 2 times 2 plus h. I'm going to leave that factored. Sometimes you end up with nice things that happen if you leave things factored. Divided by h on the bottom. So I just combine the two fractions on the top. We're still divided by h, though. So now I'm going to move the top part next door. So dividing by h is the same thing as multiplying by 1 over h. You could think about that being multiplying by the reciprocal, but I think that's too involved for this. We're just doing 1 over h. We're going to put the rest of it next door. 2 minus 2 cancels. We're left with negative h on the top. Then on the bottom, we have 2 times 2 plus h. Hey, this is that fancy thing where the h's are going to cancel. We'll use red for that again. The h's will cancel out right here. And what am I left with? So that h canceling is going to make it so I'm not dividing by 0 anymore, which is nice. So this is the limit as h approaches 0. Negative 1 up on top now still, over 2 times 2 plus h. And now we can plug in that 0 for h because it doesn't give me dividing by 0 anymore. So that is negative 1 over 2 times 2, which is 4. And that is f prime of 2, 1 fourth. That's all there is to it. Negative 1 fourth, excuse me. Makes sense? I'd buy that. If you look at just the first quadrant of 1 over x, at 2, it looks like our slopes are starting to get shallower. And they tell us that that slope right there is going to be negative 1 fourth. Nice. All right, one more tricky derivative. We got the square root of x, and we just want to find a general formula for the square root, uh, for the derivative of the square root. So let's look at square root of x. Square root of x looks like that. Looks like we have all positive tangent lines. Everywhere we are, we're going to have positive tangents. So we'll see if that's true. It's only going to be good for x greater than or equal to 0, though. So if f of x is root x, we're going to use our uh, derivative function. So limit it as h approaches 0, f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. So that's the limit as h approaches 0 of the square root of x plus h, putting x plus h into the function, minus square root of x divided by h. So we got some square roots upstairs here. And if you remember when we were doing limits by themselves, when we had a square root and a limit, it was nice to multiply by the conjugate. So that's what we're going to do. So we multiply by square root of x plus h plus root x. And same thing on the bottom, root x plus h plus root x. So the bottom, I'm going to leave factored again, because like I said, sometimes nice things happen when you do that. So I'm going to leave it as h parentheses as square root of x plus h plus root x. The top now, we're going to have to FOIL. The first terms, root x plus h times root x plus h, is just x plus h, because if you multiply a square root by itself, it just disappears. And then the outside terms and the inside terms, I'll have a root x h, root x plus h times root x, and I'll have a negative root x times root x plus h, so those will cancel out. The last term is the only thing I need. Negative root x times positive root x is just a negative x. Hey, it looks like some stuff's going to cancel out on the top, so we have limit as h approaches 0. The x's go away, so we just have h divided by h times square root x plus h plus root x. So you can see here, this is why I left the h outside, because if I had brought it in at this point, I would have to factor it back out so that I could cancel them out. If I left it out front, though, now I just see that it cancels. That's really nice. So that's that kind of magical step that cancels things out. And now I just have limit as h approaches 0 of 1 over root x plus h plus root x. So h is turning into 0. So this is just 1 over root x plus root x. Right? No more dividing by 0, because I canceled out that h. That is 1 over 2 root x. And that is the derivative of this function, 1 over 2 root x. Now, we talked about how the derivative should always be positive. Yeah, if x is greater than 0, this will be defined. And as you go um, more and more positive, what's actually happening here? As x gets bigger, these slopes are getting smaller. The shape of the square root function kind of makes sense for that, because as you move up, the slopes get shallower and shallower and shallower. 
So that's the function for the derivative of root x. All right, let's get into the kind of meat and potatoes of the new lesson now. So this is kind of the end of 10.1, and we talk about tangent lines. So a tangent line, we've kind of talked about this before. If you have a point, let's say like right at 1 right here, the tangent line is the line that is basically, it looks like it's the slope of the function at that one point. So we talk in calculus about the slope of a function, and people have called me out on it. They say, well, how can you have a slope of a function? A slope needs two points, a rise over run. It has to connect two points. Well, that's a valid point, but really at that point, if we can just talk about the line that just touches at that one spot, all right, it doesn't cut through the function. It just kind of touches and it bounces right off of it. So it's like if you were um, if you were to just draw the line that just barely touches at that one spot. And we want an equation for that tangent line. So we want an equation for the tangent line. So let's think about what equations for lines look like. The first equation you ever learned for line, y equals mx plus b, right? And this is a slope-intercept form, slope-intercept. Now, slope-intercept was great if you knew the slope and the intercept. But think about it. The intercept to this line is going to be down here somewhere. We don't really care about that. We care about what's happening near the point. So to find that intercept, we'd have to do some algebra. It'd be kind of tough. We don't want to do that. The other one that you learned that's pretty useless, I don't like this one at all, ax plus by equals c, the standard form of a line. And that's one that's useful for finding intercepts again, but we don't really care anything about the intercepts. <clears throat> so that one's not going to be useful either. The one we've talked about this year is uh, the point-slope form. So y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. This is, like, so useful when you're using derivatives and also in calculus. All you need is a point and the slope. The, slope, the point in this equation is y, sorry, x1, y1. So x1, comma, y1. And the slope is just the m value. Well, if we're a tangent line to a curve, that's just the derivative. So it's f prime of x. So we can use f prime to be able to find the slope at any x point. x1 is kind of the one we want. And this point right here is x1 comma y1. And we can find that by just plugging 1 into our function or whatever value we want. So if we can find a point and a slope, we can use that formula right there to be able to find the equation for the tangent line. So let's try one. So we're going to find the equation of the tangent line to f of x equals x squared, where x equals negative 1. So over here, we were looking at positive 1. We're actually looking for the equation for this tangent line right here. So we're trying to find the equation for the tangent line to y equals x squared at negative 1. So two things we need. We need a point, and we need a slope. And the point, we know the x-coordinate already. It's negative 1. How can we find the y-coordinate? Well, x squared looks like this. That's a very bad picture of x squared, that's okay. I want to know what is the y coordinate negative 1. Well, I can just find that by plugging it in. f of negative 1 is negative 1 squared, which is 1. So our y coordinate is 1, and I found that by just plugging it into the function. So the slope, I'm going to have to find the derivative. I'm going to have to find the derivative at the point x equals negative 1. So we're trying to find the slope of the tangent line when x equals negative 1. So to find that, we're going to use the derivative function. I'm actually going to do the general f prime of x. So uh, we're dealing with x squared. So it's the limit as h approaches 0, f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. So we'll plug in the pieces. x plus h, so a limit h approaches 0. So we'll have x plus h squared, because we're plugging it into the function, right, for that x value right there. So we have x plus h squared minus f of x is just x squared divided by h. Now we'll expand it out. Limit as h approaches 0 of uh, x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus x squared all divided by h. x squareds cancel. These are red for that. There we go. They're gone. And then the h we can pull out to the front to blue, so we have the limit as h approaches 0, h times 2x plus h divided by h. The h is cancel, sorry I didn't use the red there, but now we can plug in the 0, it's just 2x. So 2x gives me the slope at any point x. Well, what x point am I concerned with? Negative 1, I want to find f prime of negative 1, so that's just 2 times negative 1, which is negative 2, and now we throw it into our point-slope equation, y minus y1 equals the slope times x minus x1. And we'll just put them in. So y minus my y coordinate, which is 1, 
is equal to the slope, which is negative 2, times x minus x1. So x minus negative 1, which is plus 1. And that is the equation whoop, for our tangent line. Now I've got this ready to go in Desmos, just to see if that actually is going to graph our tangent line. And let's see if that's what happens. We'll keep those. So we'll come over to Desmos here. Here's our x squared. I've got the point negative 1, 1 plotted right there. So we see that point is indeed on our graph. And I'm just going to turn on our line here, which is what we just found. y minus 1 equals negative 2 times x plus 1. And we see that that is exactly the tangent line that just touches at that one point. So that's pretty cool. Let's try another one. So this time we've got 1 over x, and we're going to find it at the point where x equals 2. So if you remember from the bell work, we've actually taken care of this derivative already. So we had 1 over x, and we find it wanted to find the slope at 2. Looks like that slope was negative 1 fourth. So let's throw that in here. So we already know the slope. Go back to blue. So we know our slope, f prime of 2. We already found it. It's negative 1 fourth. And so we went through all the limit business to get that, so you would have to do that if you didn't have it already, but it was not too hard to find. And then our point, well, we know the x coordinate of the point is 2, so the y coordinate will just be 1 half. Point, slope, throw it into the equation. y minus 1 half is equal to the slope, negative 1 fourth, times x minus 2. 2, 1 half is our point negative one-fourth is our slope, and that's the equation for the tangent line. So again, the negative one-fourth came from doing limit as h approaches zero of, um, in this case, it'd be one over uh, x plus h minus one over x. So I'm doing the general x form this time over h, and then we combined the two fractions and were able to cancel out an h, and uh, gave us, uh, I think that this one actually, if you solve it out, you can try it if you want to, I think it ends up giving you negative one over x squared. And when you plug in 2, that gives you the negative 1 fourth. I think I got one more. So we're going to find the equation of the line's tangent to f of x equals x cubed minus 2x squared plus 1 at the point where x equals 0 and x equals 1. So this derivative, I'm going to kind of fly through a little bit quicker because we can kind of mix together some of the stuff we already know to find these derivatives. So x cubed, so the whole limit will work. So f prime of x, f prime of x will be the limit as h approaches 0, of um, it'd be x plus h cubed minus 2 times x plus h squared plus 1 minus uh, just f of x, which is x cubed minus 2x squared plus 1, all divided by h. Now, you can expand all of these out. Some things will end up canceling out. Some things will stick around. The h will end up being divided out. But we did some of these earlier x cubed, we found out the derivative of that was 3x squared. x squared right here, we found out the derivative of that was 2x. All right, we did that at the very beginning, um, and I think we also we did it in the last example. Right, In the last example, we found out that it was, uh, sorry, two examples ago, we found out it was 2x. So we have these derivatives already, so I'm just going to throw them in. And then 1, Let's talk about that for a second. So 1, if I were to graph just y equals 1, it would be a flat line. What is the derivative of that function? Well, it's the slope of the tangent line, which is always 0, so it's just nothing. So this derivative, 3x squared minus 2 times 2x, which is 4x. If you want to do this all the way out, you're more than welcome to. You should get 3x squared minus 4x. It's kind of a nice exercise to try that if you want to. But we're running a little long here, so I'm going to just kind of keep moving. So 3x squared minus 4x um, is going to be our derivative, f prime of x. And I just got that by using pieces we got earlier today already. So uh, if we, uh, we have two tangent lines to find here. First, we'll find it at x equals 0. So at x equals 0, let's find out what y equals. Well, y is going to be 0 cubed minus 2 times 0 squared plus 1. Looks like that's 1. So our point is 0, 1. My slope, f prime of 0, well, it looks like if I plug in 0 for my derivative, I get 0. That's interesting. That means that the slope is 0, so it's a horizontal tangent line. So let's put the pieces in. y minus the y-coordinate, which is 1, is equal to the slope 0 times x minus the x-coordinate, 0. Well, the right side is just 0. This would be y equals 1. That makes sense because it's a horizontal line. 
So let's go over to Desmos and see if that's what we get. Mm -hmm. I think I actually uh, skipped over the Desmos from the last one too, so let's do that first. <clears throat> so this was the uh, 1 over x example. So uh, we have the point here 2, 1 half. And then let's graph our line and see if it matches up. And there we get our tangent line right to the curve 1 over x at the point 2. So the problem we're working on right now, <clears throat> we got a horizontal tangent line at the point uh, where x equals 0. And it looks like that's the case. It looks like we have a horizontal tangent right there. So if we plot our function, y minus 1 equals 0 times x minus 0, there we get it right there. We have that nice purple tangent line that's tangent to the graph right at, one, at 0, 0, 1. So now let's go over and try the other tangent line. So we're going to try to find it when x equals 1. So we had our f prime of x. So we had our f prime of x was 3. Oop. Oh, this is the wrong slide. No, we changed our function. We're going to have to do it right here. So we have f prime of x is 3x squared minus 4x. We want to find it at x equals 1 now. So let's get the point. 1, if we plug it into the function, 1 cubed is 1, minus 2 is negative 1, plus 1 is 0. So the point is 1, 0. The slope is going to be f prime of 1. So we plug 1 into our function here. 3 minus 4 is negative 1. So let's put it into the uh, equation for a line. y minus the y-coordinate, which is 0, is equal to the slope, negative 1 times x minus the x-coordinate. x-coordinate looks like is 1. So there is the equation for our tangent line. It's okay to leave the zeros there. You can take them out if you want to, but um, you might as well leave them because it really shows you know that point is 1, 0. So let's go back to our graph and see if we graph that line, if that's going to match up. Nope, oh, that's what I want. Here we are. Okay, so we're going to turn off our purple tangent line, turn this one on, we get an orange tangent line right at 1, and if we zoom in a little bit, you see that it is indeed tangent at that point. It's kind of weird because it looks like it goes through this point over here, but all we care about is right at 1 is it tangent to the graph, and we see that it is. y minus 0 equals negative 1 times x minus 1. So finding these tangent lines is a little bit tricky. Um, because you have to find the derivative, you have to be very familiar with how to use that derivative equation, and then you have to be able to plug in the important points over here to be able to find the equation for the line. So point-slope form of a line, and mixing it along with the derivative is the important thing for this lesson. All right, and that's all I've got for you. Your homework is going to be page 802, 17 through 20. It's just four tangent lines. That's all it is, is four tangent lines. And uh, it's a really good idea to do these for sure because um, once you kind of get into the hang of doing these they become a lot easier. I love you guys that's why I'm here have a great day and I'll see you in class.